What you just saw was one example of what sex trafficking can look like in our area. A high school girl seen by hundreds maybe of people on a daily basis, but never truly seen. She has been targeted, manipulated, oftentimes drugged and blackmailed into doing things that she never thought she would do. Maybe it started off with a boyfriend who finally told her all of the things that she needed to hear, that she's wanted to hear, that he loved her. Maybe he bought her things and made her feel special like no one had before. Maybe they exchanged pictures or videos, which is common and even normal in teen culture today. But now he's threatened to leak them to the entire school to her friends or family or post them online if she doesn't do what he says she should. So she complies reluctantly. Then step by step, she goes down this dark road of trauma and abuse. She lies to keep it a secret and her friends and family think she's just at a friend's house or staying late for practice or tutoring at school. But the truth is she's trapped. And she feels like she can't escape. She feels hopeless. This is modern day slavery. And this is what we're talking about tonight. Um, It's domestic minor sex trafficking, y'all, or DMST. It's an underreported and underground crime. And it's happening all around us in our schools, in our churches, in our communities right here people that we may even brush shoulders with on a weekly basis, but it's time to fight the silence. I've found that not a lot of people are talking about this. The topic is quiet, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It exists and the enemy works in the silence, but we're going to scream into that silence. We're going to shine a light in the darkness, and that's what tonight is all about. It's about doing something seeing something, saying something, and doing something, not just once, but continuously, just like we're called to. So I want to thank all of you guys for being here this evening. Thank you so much for choosing to share this evening with us around a topic that matters greater than you may ever know. But I hope we get to sense and experience a fraction of that as we move forward through this evening together. Before we get into what's next, I'd love if you would just pray with me. And let's ask God to do what only he can over these next few moments, okay? So Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of of people who either can't speak or are too afraid to speak for themselves. I pray that we see a change and a transformation starting here in this place or continuing here in this place and bleeding over into our communities and affecting lives of the most vulnerable in a really special and mighty way that they feel, that we feel your presence, your peace, and your hope. God, I'm thankful for everyone who chose to be here this evening, and uh, pray that you just bless this time. It's all in the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Well, my name is Ren, and I'm the student pastor here at Legacy Church, and uh, about eight years ago, I had this general idea of what sex trafficking was, probably like a lot of us in this place also do. But my concept of sex trafficking was very, you know, distant. It was really large, and it felt very third world, you know? Like it didn't really impact me, and it wasn't around me. It felt like it was kind of somebody else's problem, or the solution was just out of reach for me to be a part of. I had these images of like busloads of people coming across country lines, you know, and and like just a far off place. And that was about all I knew. And that does happen. That is a real part of sex trafficking. Uh, I remember kind of knowing that, like I said, about eight years ago. And around that time, my favorite band at the time, which is like this Christ was like this Christian metalcore band called For Today, they released an album called called Fight the Silence. And the title track of this 
album was all about the global injustice of sex trafficking. These girls being forced or deceived and coerced into having sex against their will way too young and way too often and about how we have to do something. This song's purpose was to spread awareness. I heard it. I thought, that's a great song. I love that band. Woohoo! Go get it. That was my thought. I didn't realize what God was doing in me the first time I watched the music video. What he was doing was planting a seed. That seed would be watered and cultivated and tended to over the next five years before it finally started to burst out of the dirt and sprout for the first time and turn into something more. Five years later, my wife and I were at this foster and adopt conference, and I went to a breakout session at this conference that changed my life forever. The breakout session was about the relationship between foster care and sex trafficking, and kind of how these things feed into one another. Um, The session was led by a woman named Brooke Crowder, a survivor herself, and she founded this place in Austin, which you've heard mentioned a few times this evening, called The Refuge. Uh, The Refuge is the nation's largest long-term live-in rest and restoration center for child survivors of DMST, or domestic minor sex trafficking, sex trafficking that is happening right here in our communities, in our own backyards, something that For the first time, I felt like, oh shoot, I can do something about this. As she spoke, I thought about my little girls that we were fostering at the time and would eventually come to adopt, who they would grow up to be, and the sheer thought of them getting taken advantage of and manipulated at this level, it it disgusted and, and horrified me. It started to swell up in my heart. As a youth pastor at the time, I thought about you. I get to lead teenagers, and I learned that, that, that the age of young girls who are lured into sex trafficking are the same age as a lot of us sitting here in this room. My heart started to break as I thought of the families in our churches. I thought about our city and our school. I thought about home and that this is happening here. I thought this could be anyone. I wondered if I have known a victim, if I have seen somebody who, who was being taken advantage of at this level, but I, was, I, didn't, I didn't see it. My eyes weren't opened. I didn't, I didn't know. I wondered if, if I have been, if I've had a conversation, if I've had an encounter with someone. And I started thinking about all the people and the things I've seen, and I just wondered, did I miss something? Did I miss an opportunity? I sat there broken in the shadow of this massive issue that suddenly got so close to home, that suddenly got so personal, and I felt sick because of the age at which this can begin. And I felt a lot of anger, and I felt like screaming. I remember it just broke me that this exists. It broke me, y'all. And then, I'll never forget it, I remembered that song by my favorite metalcore band for today, that had come out five years prior, where the vocalist in that band did exactly that, did exactly what I wanted to do, screamed about it at the top of his lungs, about this injustice that's happening and just begging someone to do something. I'm like, I'm one person, I can only do so much, but we collectively and together, well, we can do a lot, but I need help, I need help. And that's why, like Chris was saying, this is why God made us relationally. This is why he did it. We would be disobedient to not do something if we know better. So I went home and I watched the music video again five years later, right? And I'm not going to lie, I cried my eyes out. And I'm not going to lie, I cry my eyes out every time I watch it. So I wanted to share it with you guys tonight, if y'all would watch this with me. This video was, uh, it dealt with the global issue of sex trafficking. We're talking more about the local issue of sex trafficking, but still, it, it happens. This stuff is real and it's happening. Some of the things in the video that, that just grip me were Rebecca, for whom it started at age nine, and she had her first child when she was 11 years old, or Gabriella in the video who it says was forced to have sex 20 to 48 times per day. 
uh, which went on for years. Some other statistics that um, Brooke mentioned at the uh, conference that I was at are, are these. The Refuge, which is this place here in Austin that we've been talking about this evening, um, it can house up to 40 girls rescued from sex trafficking, which is amazing, right? Like, praise God for that, that there's a place where they can go. The state of Texas has about 65 available beds for child survivors' long-term recovery. Again, that's fantastic. Here's what's not fantastic. There are currently 79,000 young people being sex trafficked in Texas, which is the second highest in the United States. And like I mentioned, this can look like a bunch of different things. This can look like someone who's getting blackmailed from sending pictures or videos who's staying after school or going over to their brother's friend's hotel after school, and someone is making money off of them because they're trapped and being framed and threatened, or their family's being threatened, right? Like this, that, that, that qualifies here. This is what we're talking about. There are fewer than 600 beds available nationwide for child sex trafficking survivors. And you want to know something? There are over 13,000 animal shelters nationwide. Why do we care about cats and dogs more than human beings? Child sex trafficking is the fastest growing crime in the world because it can happen anywhere. Anyone can be guilty or drawn into this crime, and it's so hard to, to track because it's so deceptive, it's so silent, it's so dark. The past five years, sex trafficking has seen an 846% increase in the United States alone, a number unfathomable to the mind. In the For Today music video we watched, it was said that it is a $32 billion industry and it's the second largest global crime industry. But today, because that video was made a while ago, it's now over $150 billion and the number one global crime industry. And uh, possibly the saddest statistic in here is that fewer than 1% are ever rescued, and the average age is 15. The average age is 15. I know y'all are smart, and you know what it takes to make an average. Just as many 16, 17, and 18-year-olds that feed into that 15-year-old average, there are 14, 13, 12, and 11-year-olds just as well. For the ones who are rescued, the Refuge is doing amazing work. Tonight, you've heard students talk about what they have done, what we have done to help these girls find the healing and the recovery from the trauma and the abuse they have experienced at the hands of violent sexual abusers. And uh, I, I wanted to share one more. Uh, and, and she, Ava, is going to come up and tell us about how meeting basic needs can make a big impact. So you guys give her a hand. You, you come on up. So um, a few months ago, I was given an opportunity to make a difference. The high school girls, including myself, raised money, went shopping, and then created care bundles that were given to survivors of sex trafficking at, sh sex trafficking at the refuge. That night is one of my favorite memories because it was an incredibly fun bonding experience with my friends. And more importantly, because the whole time, we knew that what we were doing was going to transform someone's lives for the better. We got to be a positive impact on the lives of those who had been through immense suffering. And I believe that's exactly what God intended for me and for us as his followers. The care bundles we made gave much needed supplies to those at the refuge. But just as important as those necessities was the actual care that we were able to give to those girls. By raising awareness of their situation tonight and in our day to day, we are going to be able to change the lives of these girls and others who are in their situation. By talking about issues like this, instead of pretending like they don't exist, we can encourage others to stay safe and aware of the danger that is out there and remind them that it's okay to talk about these situations. I want to encourage all of you here tonight to make a difference, to stand up and do something to combat the silence. 
Even doing something as small as reaching out to places like the refuge and asking what you can do to help and then putting forward your best effort in following through can make your life and the lives of those you are helping so much better. Everyone here tonight is here because they believe somewhere in their hearts that they can be the change, that we can make a difference and we can fight the silence. Yes, this is just one example of something that you can do with just a small group or a group of friends to help make a difference uh, in the lives of girls who have been rescued. But there are so many things that, that we can also do to make sure that no one gets trafficked, that, that no one falls into it in the first place. Preventative things, too. Starting with having the conversations. I see some people already got the shirts. Like, get a shirt. Don't leave here without one. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you do that. Have the conversations. No what it's about. But also, we've got to know the signs. Like I've mentioned, there can be people in your, your Algebra 2 class or something, right, or that walk in the same hallways as you, that you're just, like the song says, like, open our eyes. Maybe your eyes just need to be opened to see something first before we can say something, before we can do something. But it's progressive. But it starts with step one. It starts with a seed. And maybe tonight is your seed, that it was for me five years ago. I, I don't know, but we've got to do something.